for Korean Ukrainian Alexander Shin in Taipei, being 8,000 kilometers away from his family in southern Ukraine was difficult enough when Russia's invasion began. I have to recall the first day. It's, it's the, the most horrible day of my life, for sure. But on the war's second day, and after several calls to family ensuring their safety, he was suddenly surprised to receive a message asking if he was okay. His brother, still in Ukraine, had seen a message in a telegram group with two million subscribers, suggesting that China had simultaneously begun an invasion of Taiwan. At that moment, my thought was like, I have no idea. Like, what if it's really happening and I have no idea? So I start googling through news in English and there's no information on that and I felt relieved. But then I tried the same thing in Russian. I literally googled China attack Taiwan. What he found was troubling disinformation. Several Russian language articles from Ukraine-based media outlets appearing to confirm his brother's fear that China had also launched an attack on Taiwan. So this is the one that says China yeah, attacks. Yeah, it literally says... Uh, China attacked, past tense, Taiwan. Another headline reads, China also has a Donbass, implying Beijing's assertions that Taiwan is part of China echoes Russia's relationship to the Donbass region in eastern Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin is justifying the invasion by claiming Moscow is liberating the region. The headline continued. Against the backdrop of a uh, crisis in Ukraine, China is planning their special operation. Special operation are the exact words of Vladimir Putin when he announced the invasion of Ukraine. And in another article that speculates what would happen if Beijing followed Moscow's example, one paragraph reads, pro-Chinese unification sentiment in Taiwan is strong and growing, and that it's not a given the island would defend itself. However, that's a claim easily countered by statistics published by Taiwan's National Junzhu University, which surveys Taiwanese sentiment toward cross-strait relations. Over the past two decades, they clearly show a fall in the number of Taiwanese supporting unification with China. While people in Ukraine deal with disinformation about a Chinese attack on Taiwan, in Taiwan itself, in the media and on the streets, there is a growing debate over the validity of comparisons with Ukraine. But Taiwan's leaders have been quick to dispel parallels. In a statement condemning Russia's invasion, Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen said the government will strengthen defences against cognitive warfare and attempts to use the situation in Ukraine to undermine morale among the Taiwanese people. And she's warned about Chinese disinformation tactics elsewhere. In Ukraine, using disinformation to fracture unity has been a concern since the Russian invasion began, and social media giants are taking action. Facebook and Twitter this weekend removed two anti-Ukrainian covert influence Russian operations. And Telegram, the app where Alexander's brother first saw the fabricated story about Taiwan, has also threatened to shut channels. You know, someone sitting in Taiwan might say this might just be because the Ukrainian media don't have enough contextual knowledge about cross-strait relations. Do you think it's that simple? It's not because they don't understand Taiwanese realities. It's because they're trying to achieve something with this message. Because the words they use is literally attack and invade. Alexander was able to see through the disinformation, but he says for those in a conflict zone where anxieties are heightened, stories like these could sow discord as well as demoralize Ukrainian soldiers. When you read those news, you would give in to panic and it would feel like, oh, okay, well, there's this another war happening and this is clearly already leading to a world war. Taiwan Plus was unable to confirm whether the articles were part of a concerted disinformation campaign by Russia. But in their capacity to incite fear and anxiety, they're proof once again that modern warfare takes place as much online as it does on the battlefield. Chris Ma and James Chater for Taiwan Plus.